Hello everybody and welcome to ThinkBox Chris ranks the Kingdom Hearts 3 Remind DLC Super Bosses from easiest to hardest. After you get through the mostly rehashed climax with some twists thrown in here and there, we get honestly the cutest non siku moment in the game and are introduced to the revamped Cavern of Remembrance. And we all know what that means kids, it means suffering. Life is pain. Now get your dick slammed in for story's sake. The Day or fights are meant to be extremely different from their past iterations, but it kind of fails on a couple of points here and there. Hell, Xion didn't even have a prior fight to work with, so good on you, Square. You got that one right. Let it be known that these were fought on beginner because I have shit to do and don't need to fluff my gamer ego. So leave the hate comments at your own free will, and let's get going. Starting off our list with the easiest member, Vanitas. I've been waiting for this. Which is kind of a shame since he's one of the most adorably edgy characters in the franchise, and he just doesn't have that much to deal with. Since it's assumed you've played Birth by Sleep and this game and the DLC, you fought him at least seven times beforehand, and thus he just has no surprises. Except his DM. That thing is just nonsense. The best thing to do is either have Dark Form or any form change with a barrier to just avoid it, or thunder him in the air before he starts casting, or else they're gonna be in for a rough time. Overall, there really isn't anything I can think of that makes him dangerous, because at this point all of his attacks are so similar to the base game that the new ones just kind of blend together. Fuck that one shockwave that comes at you slower than the rest to fuck up your guard timing. That is such bullshit. Coming in at number two, we've got Dark Riku. I'll show you how powerful I am. Hey look, it's the OG boyfriend fight with 70% more ham. God, I love this kid. I want more of hammy Dark Riku. Anyway, the fight. The one thing to look out for is his plunge attack because once you block it, he jumps around with his barrier up to throw you off and waste your eventual opening. I do think it's neat how once you're done hitting his barrier, he has a reprisal to catch you off guard. His attacks are well-rounded and pretty easy to get. His DM is frankly just him using more particle effects. And while I beat him on my first try, whereas Vanitas is technically harder, I feel like Riku is just one of those cases where he has more means to kill you, whereas Vanitas just had his desperation move. So I maintain his spot as the easiest. Third on the chopping block is Ansem. Sleep in darkness. Ansem is a lot tougher than he was in the base game, which means he's still not that hard here. His base moves are thus. That stupid 360 laser barrier, Dark Inferno staggering balls, or they're a callback to his energy balls from KH1, but either way, they're still a thing. And lastly, that stupid ground claw and laser butt plug combo that just ruins your day. This one seems to pull his desperation move out more often than the others. Or maybe I just died to it more often since I kept getting him to that point so quickly. Be warned, the balls shoot deadly purple sperm and are immune to nut taps. So try and avoid them like a homophobic frat bro and you'll do fine. Also, for some reason, this guy and Yuzora are really into vor balls, so don't let it suck you up and you should be doing just fine. He's a fine boss, but what did you expect from the first final boss in the series? He isn't all that complex. Moving right along to number four, we've got Luxord. Now, let the game begin. Ugh. Fuck this guy's gimmicks. I really liked the base game fight because it was just a really interesting fight. Now we're back to the clock. But unlike the past iteration, I can actually understand what this guy's DM is. Not to say that the past one wasn't easy, but it relied on getting that last button prompt and oh, God, is it annoying. Anyway, the boss proper has an interesting way of dealing with one of his bigger moves. Every attack he does involves his cards, and if you block them, they disappear. But if you don't, they get added to this game of peekaboo and it makes the game much harder. That is, until you learn the trick of just dashing around the arena to find the circle card to show all the other cards' faces, and thus breaking his deck like it's a Yu-Gi-Oh 2 partner. One thing to note is that those cards that slam into you can be dealt with by using thunder on all six of them to avoid being a twink sandwich. His ult is a bit confusing, but I beat him the first time without really learning it, so you can too. Realistically, there's nothing Luxor can do that makes me learn every aspect of the fight, so he's just not as threatening as the ones that are higher up, but you still need to learn the games to win, just not all of them. Shot stepping upward to number five, we've got Zigbar. All right. The hero thinks he's ready now. Avoid the bullets and you'll be fine. I don't really have a lot to say about this man at this point. If you haven't realized that one singular tip, you'll be in for a rough time. Block the shots, dodge, block, dodge, shot step, and then wreck him when he's open. My only note is that when you get the reaction command to do the high noon at the Twilight Corral, just pay attention to him. And that's about it. Oh, and his ult is less bullshit because it just follows the pattern on the ground mostly, so it's way easier to judge the dodge timing. But with a potion or even an elixir right after, you'll be fine. I can't really say much for him other than he's just someone who can't be super hard to deal with based on the fact that all of his shots can be blocked back at him. Not for much damage, if any, but still, he'd be a good fight. Also, him constantly changing the damn arena every five seconds is less annoying because there's more room to block shit this go around. I hope his boss fights in later games carry on stuff like this because this is a much better idea than H2s. Moving on to number six, we've got Terra Xehanort. Except the darkness. 
Terranort is one of those bosses I never really figured out a strategy for. I just kind of attack him until he starts throwing the Guardian at me, and even then that gets pretty easy to figure out by itself. His ult is a joke because it's the same fucking ult as in Remind in KH1 when Ansem had him, so dodging it just requires timing. I will say he has this red tinted attack that he stole from Zodiac Aqua that can't be blocked and will get you comboed if you do, so I suggest dodging them if you want to make it out alive. He's this high up because he can stunlock you with those dark volley shots and is just really annoying to hit, so when you do it's real satisfying. These bosses are hard, I'm not saying they're not, I'm just saying that we know them enough that they aren't too difficult to deal with. And for number 7, it's Syax. Ironic, I know. The moon exhilarates me. Ah, the big blue moon cultist himself. Syax really is just the same as in the base game. His abilities aren't too taxing to deal with. He just keeps land sharking or throwing shit at you and actively stuns you if you block one of those. That is so stupid. The only reason Syax isn't at the bottom of this list, it's really tough to dodge because he only has you to track now, so everything is harder to manage. I will say the death menu screen info about hitting with Blizzard is random and helpful, since what the fuck does one have to do with the other? Is it the water? Is it because it's frozen? Why isn't it just water, like the tides or some shit? Eh, it's not that important, I'm just bitching, but I'll take whatever I can get to stop that damn thing from charging. But yeah, Syax, he's not too hard, not too easy, he's just predictable, but in a good way. Moving on to number 8, it's Young Xehanort. You cannot win. This clock reversing twink needs to die. Bitch Boy here has a few moves that, what else? Freeze you! He's got that stupid whip in the base game, but now his icicle attacks just freeze you on contact. Which is just. Stop him! He has this clock move that stops you and summons in clones of himself while he has some armor, and you can just shot step to him to get rid of the armor and the clones. The ult is much the same. The only difference is that if you don't stop him, he gets one whole health bar back. Such help, much devastated. Then you just wreck him for a little bit until he does it again, and you get it right. It's a lot of rinse and repeat. The difficulty comes from in how much he teleports and sends in clones to do his dirty work. If he didn't do that, it would be like five times easier, but that's neither here nor there. Anyway, moving on! Shockingly, at number nine, we've got Lark Seen. Really? Do we have to do this? God! Damn, that's a cool opening line. As I've said before, Larxene is my favorite organization member, because if you've been following me for a while, then of course she is. She's got style, she's got flair, she's got those damn shuriken nails that make me want to kill something. God, they're so cool. Larxene takes the most damage out of anyone I've seen and has one of the lower health bar counts, but she's up so high because she has the most attacks that you cannot block, and that if you get stuck in, you can get comboed pretty easy. The other thing is that her clones come up on you super fast, and they're just a staple of her moveset now, which I'm down for. Bring on the bitch clones, Union. We need them. She also just teleports his lightning, so you can track her, but she moves so fast that all you do is deal with the clones and then get clipped because you weren't paying attention. It overall is a fast encounter, whether you live or die, but it is better than being the bullshit that is KH2 Data Zaldin. Seriously, fuck that windshield! Moving on to number 10, we've got Zenness. Why resist the emptiness? Zenness is the most like his KH2 counterpart. The sole exception is that stupid thorn attack that you had to spam triangle through. Now he just uses it to say, <laughs> and then blindsides you. So stick to ground combos when possible. It definitely threw me for a loop. Apparently you can flow motion off the walls he spawned, but I never got to make that happen, so take that with a grain of Kyrie's ashes. You can, however, just thunder them and they'll disappear. And I think if he gets stuck in it, that just breaks his pattern and you get a small window of attack. But yeah, the grab gets less threatening if you remove the walls. So you'll get comboed by him, put down, dodge, and so on and so forth. The laser bullets are just fast and brutal and surprisingly more deadly than Zigbar's. Speaking of those, it's ult sees him doing the best DM ever ever and just coating the screen in that bullet hell dome and still attacking you for a while and then just pelting you until you're nothing but holes holes in pain just like a whorehouse so he does this in three waves and even throws in those blue ones that can't be blocked just to fuck with your day the third and final wave sees you blocking every bullet ever fucking made and if you don't block it you will most likely die because if you manage to block it with that single pause that can fuck you over you get stunned and he tries to combo you and damn it all oh, that is not the single coolest and most bullshit idea but if you can survive that he'll go back to doing normal attacks and you can with luck pull through Coming in at number 11, the Lord of the Castle himself, Marluxia. I'll scatter you to the wind. 
I have no real notes for this fight, he just kind of flies around, buzzsaws through the ground, and then you just get a feel for his openings. One thing that has to be mentioned, and puts him near the top of this list, and beats out the other 10 base org members before the big two, and that's his hard-coded phase transitions. See, he has these two attacks that mimic the entire battle in the KH2 data fights, where he puts a counter that imitates your level, only now they're hard capped at 15 and 99. However, do not let those numbers fool you, they are actually flipped, so the 15 count is really long, and gives you time to attack him out of his armor to continue the fight. It's random and is just a way to break up the fight. The second one is just bullshit, because my first time beating it, I just kind of flail around and accidentally hit him in the 4 picoseconds you have when he's done attacking before you die. The 99 counter counts down fast, like insanely fast, and you have to survive his ults to get a chance to kill him. So, stand in the middle of the arena and just dodge in a circle. If you get clipped, use aerial recovery and not aerial attack, and then wait till he hovers in the air. Once he does, cast thunder or fire or something that will hit him and be done. Do not try to combo him because you will die. Your ultimate finisher won't do enough damage. Just wait and then use magic. If you don't have any, make sure you have an elixir or an ether. I don't care how you do it, just kill this bastard. Jumping right on up to number 12, Mr. Finger Wiggles himself, Master Xehanort. Destiny is never left to chance. Xehanort is an interesting one. He has like three new attacks, but that's really it. He has these three big ass lasers that he just summons that reflect off of one another like a goddamn prism. These giant yo-yo looking things, and, and then he actually casts magic at you that does status effects. Genuinely surprised by that last one, as only Blizzard has affected you at this point. But fire burns. Who knew? He teleports, but since he already had the keyhole teleport in the game data, they just used that, which I'm all for. The big boss deserves a fabulous entrance, even if it's to throw a spike ball at a twink's face. His ult sees him ripping off his third phase from the base game, only this time he actually does stuff rather than sitting on a fucking chair. The final phase of this fight sees the lasers turn into single big red ones that track you slightly, which if you dodge you can wreck him a little bit. The yo-yos get bigger spikes, are quicker, and daddy fingers with the X-Blade at you and then pusses out like a bitch, at which point he does normal stuff again. And if you made it this far into the fight, you probably know what to do already. And if you need my advice, then I cannot help you. I mean, just look at the footage. I'm terrible. But yeah, kill the old man and you should be fine. Moving right along to, ironically, member 14, who is the 13th slot on the list, Xion. Why do you fight? Alrighty, this one's a bit weird, and that's because you don't really get a fight that precedes this. The best one I can come up with to compare it to is Roxas in KH2, but the problem there is that Roxas does a lot of wide particle effects and light beams, whereas Xion throws her keyblade at you, bounces at you like a jackrabbit on steroids, and uses laser beams. Xion hits hard and hits a lot. You better know the block timing and you better get it down pat. This chick hits you so damn hard that I think I did more damage retaliation attacking and then just hitting the square after I got hit than by any actual meaningful attacking on my part. Her ultis are doing all of this stuff, even more so, with the sun in the background and with an armor bar on. But once you flail your way through it or just let it play out while you're dodging, you'll be okay. <laughs> Xion is the most difficult because of how much you need to learn, whereas everyone else in the data org fights, even old man Xehanort, have at least two fights prior that were built upon four of these. Xion had one monster fight and half of another fight where she gets KO'd pretty quickly. There is one person who was just bonkers hard and actually caused me to rage quit for the first time in years, and that is... Number 14, the hardest boss in the Kingdom Hearts 3 Remind DLC, Yozora. Let's do this. The most unsurprising hardest boss in the DLC, Mr. Mishmashed Eyes, Riku looking motherfucker himself, Yozora. Show of hands, who's actually surprised? And if you are, you're lying. Yozora is just the hardest, and he's meant to be that way. At least at first. See, unlike something like Lingering Will, no, I won't stop shit talking this asset, he sucks, and you all have blinders on because of nostalgia. See, where the walking fuck up gets wrong is that he has seven moves, including his ult, that make him completely invulnerable. Whereas Yozora has like which get revamped in his ult, that all have punish windows. He has this move where he has his sword teleport around you, and if you block it, you can shot step to him and take a good chunk of his health bar. One move where he tries to suck you in and steal your items, which if you have a Kupu coin, just glide out of range of it because he will take it and he will use it. If you damage him enough during the suck phase and get him for a good amount of damage, the attack where he takes your keyblade has a small window during the second attempt. There's this one attack where he puts you in this pyramid where he just shoots you with lasers. On the second one, if you dodge it and immediately thunder him, you can get a couple 
couple combos in. I can go on and on, but I've got shit to do. The only real problem I have with this fight is that when he does the suck ball, the timing on his dodges through the clones is just way too precise. So this would be the only time I'd say use Ariel to note clip through it because fuck that shit. Oh, and the next section of his ult. Ariel is just the best thing. Regardless of how you want to handle this, if you do enough damage, don't get the coin stolen and survive at least two ults, you'll come away with a win, my dude. And that is something to be proud of, let me tell you. Anyway, that's gonna do it for this boss ranking. If you want, I have other videos on Kingdom Hearts, Disney, Pokemon, really anything I find interesting. If you like what you see, make sure you subscribe, and I also have a Twitter and a Patreon if you want to donate. I hope you all have a fractastic day, and I'll see you guys next time.